Comparing data that's defined in different ways is like comparing apples and oranges. More young people are getting seriously sick from the coronavirus than was initially thought. Data shows that more young people in their 20s are testing positive. Hello, this is Vivek Goel. I'm Vice President, Research and Innovation and Strategic Initiatives at the University of Toronto and a professor at the Dalhousie School of Public Health. This U of T podcast will be giving you ongoing updates on what's next for the pandemic from my perspective. Today, I'll be talking about interpreting trends in data. In recent weeks, we've seen several reports about what is being painted as a disturbing trend: increasing numbers of cases in younger adults. It's important when we're looking at trends in data to first establish whether they're real or artifacts in the data. Has something changed in the way in which cases are defined, data is collected, or information systems are set up that has led to changes in the data itself? There are also statistical fluctuations which will happen on a random basis. And when we're looking at as many numbers as we do on a daily basis, Around the world, with respect to COVID-19, there will inevitably be such fluctuations, and sometimes for a few days in a row, which might lead to differences in what is being observed. There are also differences in how data are presented. Sometimes cases are reported based on when the lab tests are confirmed. Other times, they're reported based on when symptoms develop. There can be several days difference between those dates. And comparing data that's defined in different ways is like comparing apples and oranges. In many of the media reports about the increased number of cases in younger adults, the proportion of total COVID-19 cases was being presented. That is, how many people out of all COVID-19 cases were younger adults? That proportion will go up if the number of cases in older adults goes down. Which it has, as a result of the nursing home outbreaks being brought under control, it's important that we look at the rates based on a population level as opposed to the proportions. If we rule out that there haven't been such artifacts or changes in the presentation of data, then we can look for whether there are explanations for the true increases in the numbers. One of the things that has been changing constantly is the testing algorithms. This is normal as we move through phases of a pandemic. When we first started, it was a new disease for which there was no test available.、It、took some time to get a test out, and so many people were not tested. Then, as the number of cases grew rapidly, tests weren't available, and so the tests were restricted to people with severe symptoms. Now, the number of cases is going down, and testing capacity is broadly available. So many more people are able to be tested than were earlier in the outbreak, and amongst those will be people with mild or no symptoms, and those will likely be in the younger population. Of course, there may be some true explanations for the increases that we're seeing in younger people. They are the ones more likely to be returning to work as we open up across many jurisdictions in the country, and so they may be more likely to get infected. And we also know that younger adults are more likely to be engaging in social interactions, which may be leading to increased number of cases. But the key message is: we need to take care when we interpret data. We need to understand what the long-term trends are and look at patterns, and not just focus in on daily counts. I'm Vivek Goel. Until next time, stay safe.